Hello, I boss a day by is my name, your course facilitator for BTN 303, course titled Mycology 1. In Mycology 1, we shall be looking at fungi and all related organisms. That's those organisms that have their relationship with the group of organisms known as fungi. For today's lecture, we'll be looking at introduction to mycology. Mycology is coined from two Greek words, which are mykes meaning mushroom and logos meaning to study. Literally, the word mycology means the study of mushroom. But with the advancement in the study of mycology and technology, the term has been broadened to include all forms of fungi and related organisms. So you simply define the word or the term mycology as a scientific study of fungi. It is a branch of botany that deals with the life history, the relationship and the evolutionary tendencies of fungi, the morphology, the characteristics, the reproduction, the physiolo physiology, the economic importance of fungi. A scientist who studies fungi is known as a mycologist. At the end of this particular lesson, you should be able to describe what fungi are. You should be able to state spe specifically the characteristics of fungi, describe the mode of identifying the fungus, outline the economic importance of fungi, and classify a given fungus. What are fungi? Or what is a fungus? Fungi are non chlorophyllous eukaryotic talophytic organisms that inhabit almost every niche in nature. Fungi are studied under botany because they have rigid cell wall and they are non motile, just as you have in the chlorophyllous plants. Examples include the unicellular yeast that you find on your freshly tabbed palm wine and also the multicellular fungus like Aspergillus flavus that grows on your unpreserved leftover food. Generally, the characteristics of fungi include being eukaryotic, that means that their cytoplasmic organelles have double membrane and they have double bounded um, nucleus, no, the, their nucleus is well defined as, as against the prokaryotic organisms. Fungi possess rigid cell wall, therefore they are non motile This cell wall can be made up of chitin. Sometimes you have the cell wall being lined with glucans, manas, and other forms of polysaccharide. The fungus lives as a saprophyte or as a parasite. As a saprophyte, it lives on the dead remains of organic uh, matters, while as, as parasite, it can be an obligate parasite, that means living its entire life cycle as a parasite, or it can be a facultative parasite, that is an organism that lives part of its life cycle being a saprophyte, and when the environmental and nutritional conditions are not conducive, the organism shifts to become a parasite. Basically, all fungi are chemoheterotroph. It means that they required organic matter for their means of nutrition. Like we said, they are heterotrophic, so they don't produce their food. They rely on chemo um, compound to have their own food. Fungi have extracellular digestion. This means that when a fungus comes across a food substrate, it secretes enzymes to externally digest such a substrate and ingest in the nutrients of such digestion through its um, the cell wall of its body. Fungi reproduces um, asexually and or sexually. There are some fungi that um, produce entirely asexually they don't have any form of sexual reproduction why there are some that produce entirely sexually and there are also some others that 
have a form of asexual and sexual reproduction. As we go on in um, the study, we shall be looking at these various groups of, uh, of fungi. They produce pores and they store their food as lipid or glycogen. Fungi have the definite shapes and sizes, and the body of a fungus is usually termed a mycelium. A mycelium is a web of thread-like uh, structure that um, forms the body of a fungus. And fungi are cosmopolitan in nature. You can find them almost anywhere you can think of. How do you identify a fungus? A fungus can be identified in four basic ways. You can use the cultural characteristics. This has to do with the morphology, the, the shape of the fungus in whatever um, substrate or substratum it is growing on, the texture of the fungus and the color. You can use the source of nutrients. Basically, fungi have two uh, forms or source of nutrients. They are either carbon loving or the nitrogen loving. The carbon loving are usually the fast growing uh, fungi, while the nitrogen loving are the slow growing fungi that takes weeks or months for them to get to the stage of maturity. You can also use the microscopic characteristics, that's the footing structure of the fungus, how the fungus produce the spores, how the spores is being housed in whatever enclosure that um, circles or protects the um, spores. You can also use the molecular form of identification, which is the use of the amino acid sequences of such a fungus to get the basic um, um, amino acid that constitutes the fungus. And this form of identification is the most accurate, which has helped mycologists and taxonomists to regroup um, fungi into seven subdivisions, as we have in some um, textbooks. And it has also helped to reclassify some fungi that have been wrongly placed in um, the wrong class itato. Fungi have economic importance. They can be beneficial or they can be harmful. For example, you have the Ascobulus fufurius, which is a dung loving fungus. You find this particular fungus growing on dung, breaking the macronutrients in the dung into micronutrients so that the plants around can the plant roots around that environment can absorb. You have the Aspergillus niger. This you find growing on your leftover food, for example, your eba, your fufu that are not properly um, preserved. You have Agaricus bisporus. is a um, nutritious um, kind of fungi, the mushroom, the, co the one you commonly call mushroom that is used as a delicacy in many parts of the world. There's Chisosaccharomyces plumbe used in fermentation of, um, for alcoholic beverage and the likes. In the classification of fungi, it follows the binomial system of classification whereby an organism is given two names, the generic name and the specific name. Centuries ago, um, as you were taught in your BTN 101 and BTN 201, all organisms were grouped into two kingdoms, either being a plantae or animale, and the fungi were grouped under the plantae. But subsequently, with development in science, scientists like Whitaker Harry in 1969 reclassified the two kingdoms into five, which are the Monera, the Prostista. Post the mycota, the plantae, and the animale. In this, the fungi were given their own kingdom, separate from others, because they have some characteristic features that look like animals, and some that look like um, plants, while some are unique to them. So they belong to a separate kingdom called the mycota. In 1971, Ensford, Watt, and Bybee divided the kingdom fungi into two groups which are the division, myxomycota, and humycota. 
the Mixo Mycota are usually known as the first fungi because their cell wall do not have chitin and their cell wall is not properly defined. Why the Mycota are usually termed the true fungi? And under the Mycota, we have five subdivisions which we shall be looking at in our subsequent classes. In, in the hierarchical system of classifying a fungus, you have the kingdom, the division, the subdivision, the class, the order, the family, the genus, and the species, where the organism has its specific name. Thank you for your attention. At the end of this lesson, you have been able to uh, learn that mycology is the study of fungi, and fungi are non chlorophyllous eukaryotic talophytic organisms and they have specific um, characteristics that include being et uh, chemoheterotrophic, they have extracellular digestion, the body frame of a fungus is known as a mycelium which is a collection of hyphae. Thank you.